Welcome back to the Renovating Retirement Podcast, where you'll learn how the retirement planning industry has been lying to you, how to spot those lies immediately, and how to protect yourself against the retirement heathen that run this industry. I'm Charlie Jewett. And I'm Bobby Alford. And together, we've been crushing the lies of the Joker Brokers with the truth about retirement for years. And you probably want to stay tuned because, oh no, we We think think we're we're about about to have have another another episode. episode. Well, welcome back to 2023. Uh, This is the Renovating Retirement Podcast. My name is Bobby Alford. This is Charlie Jewett. And we wanted to give you guys an update. We have the new 2022 numbers. So we have the last 20 plus years of data in the books. We want to talk to you about how the stock market has really performed, not just the average rate of return that people market and all these great buzzwords. What's it really done for you? And what does it look like going forward? So I'm going to toss it over to Charlie. We're going to use free tools throughout this entire thing, by the way. So if you don't believe us, you can jump online and do it yourself. Uh, We like to be completely transparent. So welcome back. Happy New Year, Charlie. How are we doing? Yeah, Happy New Year. Welcome welcome to 2023 and back to the Renovating Retirement Podcast, right? It was an awesome new year. And I think this is probably one of the most important things that I've been teaching people since I learned it years ago. I'm almost 20 years into this now, but I think how can you know what you want unless you know how each how each option functions? And because we find most people, um, our clients and prospects, we find them in the stock market because it's the most popular common thing for people to do. Um, how do you know you want to stay there or that that should be a part of your life unless you know how it actually works? How can you make any decisions if you can't see clearly, right? So, you know, I love analogies. This is the only area of life where people look back to like 30 years ago and go, this is why I'm still doing it. Like if your husband was nice 30 years ago and now he's trash, you know, like, you know, like, well, that's why I'm with him. You know, the yep. current behavior of human beings determines whether we're friends with them or still stay married to them or keep them in our lives. Uh, the current behavior of professionals is whether we hire them again or keep them on, you know, you might fire a contractor if they're not building the house the right way and say, that's it, man, you know, you're out. This is the only place. I don't know why, Bobby. You know, I get frustrated and I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to spend my entire life just in this mystery, right? <laughs> this confusion of what it is about the stock market that people need, want, and love so much. How is something that slaps you around and beats you up and underperforms all of the other tools when set up properly? How is it? How does it keep such a grip on people, right? But we're still going to keep preaching the message like, please mm-hmm. take a look at what can be expected, the most recent, quote, behavior, the most recent performance, the last 23 years, and asking our customers or clients, potential clients, like, is that what you want? Do you want to try to build a plan on something that you can't use to do any form of planning mm-hmm. that has now underperformed all the other tools in itself, right? So we use uh, a free tool. I think we use the Money Chimp one or whatever, but if you understand yeah. the word for our listeners, if you just understand the the acronym C A G R Kager, which is not a, a party with lots of beer, which you know brings up past memories from college, right? It's not a Kager. Kager C A G R stands for Compound Annual Growth Rate. We just go S and P five hundred Kager calculator in our in our URL, our search bar on Google, and use the Money Chimp one. You can type in any you know any range of years. And it'll tell you what the lying number is and what the real number is. It'll tell you what average rate of return is, which we have other shows on why average rate of return is a deceptive number that's used in the industry to trick people. And then what it's actually made. Well, every New Year's Day, we get the new the, the new numbers. And last year, the market went down 18%. Mm-hmm. So we're now in a situation, Bobby, where this thing that worked from 1970 to 1999, this the most popular foundational sacred cow tool of all American retirement planning, literally everyone is using and says to use, okay? We still have 10,000 office companies with more than a trillion dollars under management only using this and punishing and firing their employees if they tell their clients to do anything else but this. Right. This thing still exists, right? And it's still the most popular, even though, from 1970 to 1999, it made almost 14% for you. Every dollar would turn into like 40 or whatever the number was. And now for the last 23 years, Bobby, we're under six and a half. We're at 6.25% only if you didn't use an advisor <laughs> and right. bought the index like Warren Buffett says. So if you didn't even use an advisor and bought the index with the lowest fees possible, well, no fees, let's say, which isn't possible, but the calculator doesn't assume fees. 
If you had no fees, no advisor, stayed in the index without any panic or anything, you would have made 6.25%. If you're paying an advisor, you'd make less. If you're mm-hmm. spread around and not getting all the dividends, you might, you know, most likely you've made less. Everybody we've looked at has made less. So how's that possible? I mean, you're you're newer in the industry than me, so maybe you got a fresh mm-hmm. opinion on this. And you're not as dark, you know, as maybe as, as I am yeah. jaded. But how is this possible? So I come I come at this a little differently, right? I think the reason everyone's in the market, number one, is because marketing works. The people who have the biggest commercials, billboards, you see them most often, they have one tool in the toolbox and it's puts you in the market. It's the only thing people educate on and they mean to make it so that you have to use them in order to manage your money. That's marketing works from a capitalist point of view. That is why we are swimming upstream. It is hard and we have to find like-minded people who listen to this podcast who want to understand what we're talking about more than just, okay, I have faith. It'll always go up. And I look at, I look to kind of use same message, different analogies. We talk about the the fiduciary word all the time, right? Fiduciary means I'm going to do right by you in any given situation. And if you are only putting your clients in the market, that's not fiduciary responsibility. On the other hand, what you said, the 70s to the 90s, if I didn't have you in the market, that wouldn't have been a fiduciary. Like it, these things change, right? If you're making 14% or whatever crazy number it was in the late couple decades, if you're making that on your stock market investment, I would be I would be unethical to not put you in that market. Right. 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 But now to stay in there, you always joke, I don't care what the weather was like in the 90s. I care what the weather's like today. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So if if the market has changed so dramatically, we had a huge recession, the 01 stuff. Then we had the the housing crisis. Now we're going through another one. We'll we'll name it later, but but we're going to have a re, another recession. So if the market has been so volatile in the last 20 years, what's it really gotten you? And that's what the numbers we're going to talk about have. And I couldn't imagine you use the the husband analogy you know, if you're in a bad marriage now, but 30 years ago, he was amazing. Yeah. You would think to get out. Yeah. I couldn't imagine the thigh master or Zumba being popular nowadays, but that was huge <laughs> yeah. in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. And and so if someone's telling you, hey, just use the thigh master, you're going to lose weight. They're not being <laughs> responsible with their advice. <laughs> Wait, I'm not supposed to go to Zumba class anymore. I have to cancel that. Well, you don't have to. Hey, everybody's got their own thing. I'm not going to hear something weird of the, all, all the weird things you've ever heard from me. I actually took a private class once. I was the only client from the oldest Zumba instructor in the world. <laughs> I went to a five. You remember my five day fasting retreat where I didn't eat yep. before Arizona. I went to a five day fasting retreat and the lady that ran the retreat was like 83 or 80. I don't know how old she was. She was she was recognized as the oldest Zumba instructor in the world. And I think I told you back that it was just me standing behind her trying to look in the right places as we did this Zumba class. Just the two of us. Oh, you never just the no two press. of us. <laughs> yeah, a weird, weird, weird information oh, from Charlie Jewett. So, I mean, we can show the picture here in a minute, but a lot of people that have been listening to the show, if you're brand new to the show and this is your first episode, this is kind of what we do is say, no, let's like see clearly and see the truth. This is, you know, tell a lie. What is it? Loud enough and long enough and people will yeah. believe it. Right. Uh, uh, is that Hitler? P.T. Barnum. The biggest, the biggest P.T. Barnum, the biggest lies are the easiest. I say Hitler. Well, close. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> totally in two different worlds. Tell a lie long enough, loud enough. Yep, and people will start to believe it. The only access people have, the only information people have access to, is what's available to be found. Nobody knows the truth. They know what's advertised. They know yep. what's placed in front of them. If why don't I watch the news? Because I I suck my thumb and cry mommy every night, thinking the world was going to come to an end. I can't handle the news. You know what I mean? They always tell me I'm about to die, and the dollar is not going to be the world currency, and China's taking over, and everybody sucks, and like you got three minutes yeah. to live, and then you're going to be murdered by the serial killer in your town. Can't handle it, right? But that's the only information. If that's the only information you let in, you have no way of knowing anything else. You have to go looking outside of that, right? So this podcast has always been uh, the goal has always been a source for. You know, I said the fountain of truth. I said that earlier mm-hmm. today, the fountain of truth, right? How do you, where do you get your information besides people that are paying to put it in front of you? 
Yeah, and I guess. And, I guess we. To be fair, <laughs> like what we are talking about is is very contrarian, right? The vast majority of the populace just throws their money in the market because of employers or you know whatever they've been taught, and a lot of the things that we try to help people unlearn by just shedding light on things is their parents didn't know most likely. Like I always say, if you don't come from millionaires, millionaires have to come from you. And sometimes with our clients, it's very difficult conversation to help them unlearn things, right? Because if we're the one voice they've ever heard say, don't be in the market, then we sound like quackbots, right? Because yeah. they're like, well, everybody else and their dog is doing it. Their dog has an IRA. Everybody else is doing it. And why wouldn't I, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And maybe the question we'll start asking in our, you know, when we meet with clients, prospective clients is pretty much everybody's in the market. Let's have a conversation about what the market is and what it does and what you can expect in the future. And then is it fair for me to ask you, do you want to follow everybody? Is this an area in your life where you want to do what everyone is doing? Like most people in the United States are in debt. Most people in the United States are obese. Most people get divorced. Like, in, this is the only area in humans, for some reason, or at least Americans, the only area where they go, I really want to be average and follow the crowd. And I don't right. know why. I don't know why. So we're, it's a call. It's a, it's, we're preaching, you know, like America's retirement evangelist, Charlie Jewett, blah, 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 blah. Right. I'm trying yeah. to wake people up to say, maybe you want to make your own decisions based on reality, based on data. Financial advice, financial advising and financial decisions are numerical. Like a bigger account generally is going to be better yep. if it has the, if the income is bigger also, <laughs> you know, more income is better than less income. Less taxes generally is going to be less than more taxes. Longer income is better than shorter income. Guaranteed is better than not. Like we know what the client wants before we meet them. Mm -hmm. They have trouble buying it. I, I will say that comfortably after 20 years mm -hmm. that everyone who has met me, no, there's one guy who didn't. One guy was worth $110 million and I gave him my entire pitch. We can optimize everything in life and make your life better and shore up the mistakes. And, and he's like, I don't, I don't care. I just want to paint. I just want to sit and look at the ocean and paint. Well, if you're worth $110 million, maybe you can, maybe there are yeah. no mistakes, right? <laughs> but everybody else, regular folks who need, have a certain amount of money that they is either just enough, a little bit over or just under most Americans, like the everyday person that needs to live off of their assets has always told me, they've always told me, that's what I want. I want my income to last forever. I'd prefer no losses to losses. I'd like more returns instead of lower returns. I'd like to pay less taxes. And then when presented with the fact that that means you can't put 100% of the dollars in your life in the stock market and just cross your fingers, they go into spasms. Yeah. I find that the biggest, the biggest roadblock for people seems to be exactly what you just said. I want to grow a nest egg. It's going to be great. And then the finish line has never been thought through with our clients, right? Like I grow my nest egg and if I have a bajillion dollars, that's a real number. If I had a bajillion dollar retirement, I would have a great retirement. But if taxes went to 99.9%, .9%, you might not, right? So we have different conversations with them, but turning a nest egg into income seems to be the the, the bottleneck when that's I meet people get, That's where people... It's, it's like being 45 years old, still seeing your pediatrician. And every time you go, he's like, yeah. stop coming. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm a children's doctor, right? You're like, yeah. but I just can't change. I can't let go of you. I love you. I don't think it's about my health. It's about this relationship we have. And will you marry me? What? Yep. Why? What? Who would need a broker or a portfolio if all the guaranteed income they need to retire hasn't been funded yet? Yeah. Like, what dollar in your life can you risk? going up and down, performing well or not well, if you haven't solved the problem of when I stop working, here's how I pay my bills. The in-case account, income accounts, increase mm -hmm. accounts are funded on per in order on purpose. Yep. The problem is, with my philosophy, people don't like it because it, it, it calls them to a change that apparently they feel uncomfortable with, is until you've funded your in-case account, your emergency fund, until you've funded your income account, until you've created, either earned the pension or created. By the way, if you know now you have a pension and you <clears throat> ignore, the, ignore the fact that sometimes pensions can go away if they're not managed with insurance companies, but if they're managed privately. But if you ignore, if you have a pension that's so big, you will never need your assets for income. 
I feel a little bit differently about that. You want to go gamble all your money and everything. By the way, no one's ever needed an account or assets to have income. You, you're free to work until you drop dead. Like this yeah. retirement thing is very American. It's a it's a luxury yeah. choice. You know what I mean? Yep. Matter of fact, you could all retire right now and go live in the woods or on the amount of money you have, live in a much smaller house or live in a different country. Nobody's a slave. We work out of a, a beautiful choice of freedom in the land of the free. I want to work to live with a roof instead of not have a roof, right? I'm sitting in Sacramento, California, where the homeless epidemic is crazy. <laughs> it's like never, there's a road where I think there's like a hundred broken down cars and RVs and tents in a row with people cooking over. I did never seen anything like it in my life. And we're in the middle of a rainstorm, like flooding, right? That's a choice. I mean, for some people, it's probably um, not a choice. It's probably a reflection of that. We don't have insane asylums and there there's a, I mean, am I even allowed to say that word anymore? Is there some other more politically correct so, word? So to wrap up what you're saying, retirement is a choice. Homelessness may or may not be. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Our next chapter of our next book. Exactly. But in this in this choice of freedom, you have the freedom to use stocks or not use stocks. Yeah. How do you make the choice? Well, let me, rec- let me make some recommendations. <laughs> One, yeah. can you afford them? Forget whether they're a good investment or not. Can you afford to buy? Pieces of companies that might prosper and might not in a recession yeah. and during COVID and for the next 20, what's the most important years? Last 30 years, 30 years in 1970, 1990. No, the next 30 years for you are the most important years and nobody knows what's going to happen. Yeah. What is buying stocks? Buying ownership and pieces of other people's company that you don't know, generally speaking. Mm-hmm. If you're Warren Buffett and you study the company, then you go in and take over the board and you, you fix that. It's like, flipping real estate. You force the equity into the thing, right? Nobody's doing that. Matter of fact, the majority of the people we meet are in mutual funds, which would be very hard (laughs) to disagree with. We're designed for poor people that can't afford real true diversification with actual stocks or ETFs. The mutual fund makes no sense after you have $25,000, $50,000, and yet we find people with $800,000 in mutual funds paying excessive fees for a tool that wasn't designed for them. Because why? Some joker broker goes, this is a good idea because I get to play golf while you pay out the fees, right? And they can market it. They can market it. Marketing. You bought the marketing, right? The packaging, the the ease of it, the social proof that everybody's doing it. This is the only area in my life where I want to be just like all the other people and suffer right alongside of them. Why be different when you can suffer? So that's exactly where we want to go with this. So when we have the last 23 years, we have the new numbers out. You know, we just rolled over December 31st, 2022, and Charlie's going to pull up the uh, Money Chimp Kager calculator, uh, compound annual growth rate versus average rate of return. We've talked about this before, but there is a significant difference on what your money really does and what what the marketing will talk about, the average. So, Charlie, why don't you talk through what we're seeing here on the screen? Yeah, I've been using this calculator since I found it now for, I don't know, 12, 14 years or something like that, because it used to be theoretical. We would show people if your money goes down 50% and up 50%, you go from 100 grand to 50 grand and then back up to $75,000, that the average rate of return is is zero. It's negative 50 plus positive 50 divided by two years. That's called the mathematical mean. Your broker and everyone in the world is allowed to tell you you're averaging 0%. Well, a portfolio averaging 0% or earning 0%, started at $100,000 should still be $100,000. How could you be averaging zero when you're down 25,000 bucks? <laughs> you went from yeah. 100 grand to 75,000. Well, it's just the way math works. Hello, it's fifth fifth grade math. You you lost 50% of a big number. You went from 100 grand to fi- to 50,000 and then you only earned 50% of the now smaller number. The stock market will always be weighted against you. The like smaller losses or small losses 50% require a bigger gain. You need 100% now to get back to the 100. Well, the reverse is true as well. You go up 33%, you go from 100 grand to 100, or you go up 50%, you go to 150, right? So you have 100 grand, you make 50%, Mm -hmm. you go to 150. Only a 33% loss takes it all. It's always, the the current is always against you in the stock market. Forget the fees and everything, but you're swimming upstream, Bobby, where everything you want is harder than what you don't want. The don't want's come, you know, the market drops quickly over one or two years, and then it takes four or five, six years to get back. You just lost seven years of compounding. So what we're looking at on the screen here is 
Forget your broker. Forget your brother who was in the industry. Forget your own thoughts. Forget Bobby and I. We don't, no one matters. There are no human beings that matter when it comes to math. This is what actually would have happened if you invested and got every single dividend. You can see I've checked off the include dividends for the last 23 years. You would have made, forget average, you would have made a true, true compound annual growth rate of 6.25 dollars if you put a dollar in look at the bottom it would have grown to 4.03 yep that's it that's it bobby that's <clears throat> so if so we if to- you and this is for just people that are listening if you put a dollar in january 1st of 2000 and you got all the way through december 31st of 2022 that one dollar would have turned into four dollars and three cents and that's if you got every dividend you weren't just spread across a mutual fund and they didn't give you what you earned and that's not what they're telling you in the marketing for the average rate of return. But those negative years, like we just went through and we're probably going into one, um, are significant. And they really do change the math when the marketing is telling you the, quote, average. Right. Right. And what changes the math? How do you, how do you beat this math and avoid this difference? Okay. How do you avoid the difference between real rate of return and average rate of return or kind of remove the deception or the lie or the, the blurriness mm-hmm. <laughs> from your, your picture. Don't, don't experience losses. It, it, it is the losses that mess with these numbers. Okay. So if you never go below zero, all of the infinite ways to earn 8% end up with almost exactly the same account size. Now, nest egg is not the most important part of retirement planning. Paycheck size is the most important part of retirement planning. Okay. If you have 10 bucks in an account, matter of fact, let's use Social Security. If you have zero dollars in an account, which is the Social Security annuity, no account, no nest egg, but they say we'll pay you until you're dead. That money spends nice. That money spends real nice. You don't need a nest egg. (laughs) The only reason to have a nest egg is to one day turn it into what you actually need. What you lose when you when you retire is the paycheck, the income. The way to measure a retirement plan is income. How high is it? How long does it last? Is it guaranteed? Is it taxable? Does it increase? Does it continue for my spouse? That's it. None of that is about rate of return, and none of that is about nest egg. And you have these people and these joker brokers in the stock market saying, "I can make you more rate of return. I can I can grow your money big time." What's your number? How would I know my number if I don't know how much income comes from the number? Why not turn around and ask the joker broker, if everything goes well, what's my guaranteed income for life that goes up with inflation? And let them look you in the face and go, I don't know. And you go, how could you not know? I'm trying to do retirement planning. If they're honest, they'll go, we don't do retirement planning. We're investment advisors. We exist for people with money that they can risk and gamble. We get paid to help you gamble it. If you're strong, you go, well, I don't need you in my life because I don't have money that I can lose unless I know the money I have. I mean, there are people, Bobby, I've met four in the last week, right, that have enough money where only 30, 40, 50 percent of it, they can buy their guaranteed income for life. It is a purchase. It is not an investment. All investments have risk, which means you can't plan on them. It is a purchase. You purchase your income with the money left over. Of course, we meet people that have enough. The general 40, 50 year old who's trying to retire one day with all their money in the stock market is just making, taking so much risk. <laughs> and let's add on top of this just for fun, right? <laughs> you know, ice cream's better with some stuff on top, some whipped cream and nuts and a cherry, right? It's not necessary, but I like it better with some stuff. Let's throw on some toppings. The safe investments that don't go below zero, that have the real math, have earned more than the risky one. For the last 23 years, if you'd put the money in the safe stuff, your nest egg, the thing your broker's promising you would have been done better without the broker, without the risk, and without the fees. How, how about that? How do you like them apples? Yeah. That's, I mean, what this flies in the face of everything that people are taught, which is why we're putting this together, right? Compound annual growth is the most important number, not an average BS number where they're, they're saying, you know, we've lost you a lot of money, but the average is positive. Woohoo. That's not what we're talking about. We want you to build it and think about things this way. Now, we have all sorts of clients. If you're a a military veteran, first responder, you have a pension like me, then we're a little different, right? We will forever be tied to that pension, but it also helps with all of the other assets in our life to prop them up. We have a floor of a pension, 
right? So the way you and I think about things is let's cover what you need or want, and then we can we can gamble with the rest of it, right? We, we can manage money. We do all those things, but it comes down to what will put you, the client, in your individual situation in the best position. Yeah, exactly. So we'll cover some more things. You know, we'll get more podcasts out here coming up because we've got a lot of a lot of interesting things in our mind that we want to put out. But at least for today, just know as you make your decisions, like if you think the stock market is a wise choice for you because you've already fund, you have so many pensions, you're going to be okay, or you've already funded your uh, guaranteed retirement income. Just know what it earns as you're yeah. choosing to whether I should invest in this or not. The the numbers six point two five percent. If you didn't use an advisor didn't pay any fees and got every single dividend. You just were in the index for 23 years. Everything you add on top of that, like a broker, a managed person, a fee probably takes it down. Not getting dividends, you throw in mutual funds and things like that, takes it down where you're below. Bobby, five-year fixed annuities are paying 5.6 right now, guaranteed. Yeah. If we have one more year of down, if the market drops again and we have 24 years to measure, we could have a 24-year average of the market lower than the safest probably investment on the planet of fixed annuity with insurance companies where we've never lost one, didn't even lose one during the Depression. That's crazy that people are still and, taking the risk. And not only that, it's funny to talk to our clients and hear them talk about, oh my goodness, did you see how far down it went? The recovery years are going to be amazing. Because they didn't lose. They just got to ride it down, keep their nest egg the same. And then when it recovers, they kill it. You never like, lose I'll money. Speak, yeah. Yeah. I'll speak direct to my parents. They got 24% two years ago. Last year, everybody lost. And now they're reset with that great 24% bump. And now they get to take the climb if it recovers this year. Everybody lost, but they another. stayed the same. They stayed the same because yeah. they chose that high water mark. Like, don't ever take me below zero and mess up my math. Which means their their account's as big as it's ever been when the market recovers, which it always eventually recovers, and they mm -hmm. grow from the highest it's ever been. There's never a recovery. Yep. No, it's and our clients think of understand what we're saying there. We're still gonna have money in the market if they want it. At this time, we're not advising a lot of people being in the market, but if they want it and all their other areas are covered, sure. Take a flyer on something you want to do and we'll help you do that. Yep. But it's not necessary right now. We, the losses hurt way more than the growth helps when you are close to retirement. Exactly. Period. End of story. So get in touch. <laughs> if you if you don't know if you didn't know the alternatives have been beating the market, or you don't know what else is out there, if you decided I don't want this, <laughs> I actually do want income. Get in touch, Charlie at renovatingretirement.com. Charlie at renovatingretirement.com. Just reach out and say, Charlie, heard your show. What do we do? Right. And Love then it. Bobby and, and my team will, will take care of you. We'll just show you the options that have been hidden from everybody because you deserve to not be with a salesperson selling mutual funds or a salesperson selling some sort of captive whole life insurance policy from The Rock or from their, their brand or whatever. I don't mean the famous guy, The Rock. Sorry, Dwayne. But you don't deserve <laughs> yeah. to be funneled into what the person has to sell. You need a true fiduciary and independent to say, here are the things you could have and how they work. Which one do you love? Yeah, well, possibly. Oh my, what a shocker. Diversify amongst them, not just diversify amongst low risk, medium risk, high risk, like diversified securities is a goofy term. They're not even secure. Diversified yeah. amongst different asset classes. I just had somebody, we'll finish after this. I just had somebody respond on Instagram and say, what do you think of gold and silver? I think gold and silver are beautiful. I like to wear them. And I said, yeah. I think gold and silver have a place in the increase account. After you've set up your in-case account, your emergency fund, and you've purchased all the income you need, and you're so blessed, you've done such a good job, you have money left over to diversify amongst things that might go up and down. I think gold and silver have an incredible place to play in the investment plan. In the retirement plan, I feel like they have no place to play because what guaranteed increasing income could you get from gold and silver? And the answer is I don't know. It depends on market performance. So it doesn't belong in the planning world belongs in the investing world things you can't plan on but you you hope for and see how they work out beautiful it's just not part of a retirement plan yep that's it crypto is the same way for me i love it but it is not part of a retirement plan you cannot you cannot wager your retirement on hope Exactly. All right. Well, thank you guys. Welcome to 2023. We're going to have more of these episodes coming out soon. And if you want, reach out renovatingretirement.com. We have some webinars, resources up there, and you can always reach out to Charlie at Renovating Re Retirement. We'll talk to you soon. Happy New Year.
Happy New Year. Thanks so much for listening to Renovating Retirement. We hope you enjoyed the episode. If you have time, please subscribe to the podcast and consider rating and reviewing the show. That will help others find us. And for show notes, resources mentioned, and to connect, head on over to renovatingretirement.com. Thanks again for listening, and we'll catch you next time on Renovating Retirement.